The purpose of this video is to discuss the importance of evaluating the luminous box dimensions for defined luminaires, show how the luminous box can impact defined luminaires, calculations, and rendered images, as well as show how to correct some problems relating to defined luminaires and their luminous boxes. Here I have an AGI file containing two rooms, three luminaires, and three calc grids. There's a calculation grid on each vertical wall behind each luminaire. I've disabled the calc points for the grids, but I've enabled isolines so we can see visually a little bit better what's going on on those surfaces. All three luminaires used different IES files, but each of them started life as the same IES file. This uses the as tested IES file. For this one, I altered the luminous dimensions, and for this one, I used photometric toolbox to rotate the luminaire's test position. Now when I say I rotated the luminaire's test position, let me bring up a graphic here. When photometry is quadrilateral, the luminaire is normally tested with its long dimensions parallel with the zero degree horizontal axis. However, when the photometry is bilateral, it is normally tested with the light emitting side facing photometric zero. So there are reasons for different test positions. Here I've got the luminaire I'm using in my AGI file. This is its normal test position. And you can see that it's tested with the luminaire's long axis parallel with the zero degree horizontal axis. This is what I did with it in Photometric Toolbox. I rotated its test position so its long axis is perpendicular to the zero degree horizontal axis. I'm only showing these cases because this is a bilateral photometric file and it doesn't make sense in this case to test the luminaire's long axis parallel with the zero degree horizontal but rather with the photometry facing photometric zero which puts the long axis perpendicular to photometric zero. Back in AGI 32 if I go into an elevation view with the isoline shown we can see these different distributions. Now again these were all based on the same IES file this one looks like it's being emitted from the four foot fixture the way it should be. This one looks more like it's being emitted from a point in the center of the luminaire. And this one looks like it's being emitted from a point in the center, but also that it's throwing light down and out to the sides more than the others. Also, if we look at the statistics, the calculated values are all different. If I go to render mode and look at the rendered image, and I can look at it with or without the ISO lines enabled, we can see the same thing. This looks like the luminaire is emitting light from a linear source, and these two look like point sources, but both are different. So what's going on here? Well, let me turn off the ISO lines first, and now I'm going to go into the render mode display properties and enable the luminous box overlay. And now we can get a better picture of what's occurring. For this fixture, we can see the green luminous box extends across the entire length of the luminaire. It's four feet long. With this one, you can see it's a, an oddly shaped small luminous box and light's being emitted from a point. This one, you can see the luminous box is oriented 90 degrees to the symbol, so light's being emitted differently than it should be here as well. All IES files are tested with far field photometry and as a point source. So the luminous dimensions listed in an IES file are all that we have to tell AGI the actual area from which the luminaire emits light. AGI takes the luminous dimensions from the IES file to create the luminous box, which it then uses to calculate how light is emitted from the luminaire. So it's calculating light from the luminous box, not from the symbol. Furthermore, when a luminaire is a linear source or an area source, like this one, AGI will try to subdivide the luminous box into multiple point sources, because again, all the IES files are tested as point sources. In this case, it's breaking it up into four point sources, which you can kind of see in this rendering, because AGI will try to break the luminous box into one-foot increments, and this luminous box is four feet long. In the case of a point source, it's unable to do that, so light is calculated from a point. And here it's still subdividing this linear source, but the linear source was tested perpendicular to the zero degree horizontal, and somebody defined the luminaire with a symbol that was long on the x-axis rather than long on the y-axis to match the source. Another issue this particular luminaire is causing can be seen if I go to a 
top view with the luminous box enabled and you can see that because the luminaire sticks through the wall and out into this other room and it's subdivided into multiple point sources it's actually emitting light into the room behind the one we're evaluating. So how do we correct these issues? Well, let me go back to model mode, go to my top view, and we need to start in define luminaire. So we can look at this first luminaire, the one that's using the as tested IES file, and here are its luminous box dimensions. Now again, in the IES file, the luminous area is listed as luminous dimensions. There are three values, and actually they're listed in order of width, or the y-axis as AGI looks at it, then x, which is the length, and then z. AGI breaks that into the luminous box. Now the way it does this, and here you have the three x, y, and z coordinates, is that it takes a center point in that three-dimensional volume of the luminous aperture, which could have height, or maybe it doesn't, and then it goes on each axis in a positive and negative direction from that center point to give us what we see here. So, for instance, on the x-axis, which is the long length of the luminaire, it's going from a center point minus two feet to the left and positive two feet to the right from that zero point, and that gives us an overall dimension of four feet on the x-axis. So you can read these by adding together the absolute values of each of these under x, y, and z, although z can be a little different. Now let me show you another graphic which will illustrate this a little bit better. The yellow you see here is the luminous box or the luminous aperture, and in this case I've given it a height, so this luminaire would either emit light out the bottom and the sides or the top and the sides, or the top and the bottom. In any event, here's the center location in the middle of this three-dimensional volume, and on the x-axis, to get to one edge of the luminaire, we go from the center negatively to this side, positively to this side, so the overall dimension on x is the addition of the absolute values of those two dimensions. The same is true of y and z. The other thing AGI does is list these in terms of a lower left-hand corner, and upper right hand corner, which is what LLHC and URHC stand for. So if we take this lower left hand corner, which is a minus x, minus y, minus z coordinate, and go to the upper right hand corner, which is positive x, y, and z, and drew a line between them, then the only box that we could draw to constrain that line would be what you see here, and that's the luminous box. I'm going to select all these entities now and orbit to give you a better representation of what you're seeing here and maybe allow you to understand this and interpret it a little bit better. So we have a three-dimensional space, negative x, y, z, LLHC, URHC, and if we go back to AGI 32, here you see the LLHC, URHC, and the three values. Now I said z was a bit different, and for this I'm going to show another example in AutoCAD. When you have a recessed fixture, like you see here, which is in a room ceiling represented by the hatching, and a symbol and luminaire that have no height to them, the IES file will list the z-coordinate as zero, meaning it has no height. And in AGI, it would use zero and zero, but if we did that, then if we put the luminous surface, which I have highlighted in yellow, at the same location as the symbol, which is highlighted in orange in the ceiling plane, then the luminous aperture would be in the same plane as the ceiling, and the ceiling could actually alter the calculations and occlude light. So what we do in the case of a downlight is we shift the luminous box down by minus 0.01 foot, which is just enough to get it out of the same plane as the ceiling and not impact the calculations. If it's an uplight, it'll shift it in a positive direction by plus 0.01 foot, but here we're talking about a downlight. So this is why, when we go back to AGI, we have a small negative value for z right here. The y luminaire also has a small negative z, but you'll notice that as far as AGI is concerned, it is now short on the x-axis and long on the y-axis. So the luminaire in this case was tested perpendicular to the zero degree horizontal axis, and so y is four feet long and x is 0.12 foot except that when somebody was changing the symbol or looking at these symbols here, 
they scaled it so the actual size dimension was long on the x-axis and short on the y. So it's 90 degrees off from what the luminous box is. This isn't true of all symbols. This particular symbol, which is the box down symbol, was originally modeled as a 1 foot on x, 1 foot on y, and 0.3 foot on z symbol. So in this case, I can actually flip-flop or swap the x and y values to get the actual sizes I need. But if you're using a symbol that is sized differently, you may need to figure out what factors need to be applied and changed for x and y to give the actual size needed. And you want the actual size of the fixture to be the same size or larger than the luminous box dimensions, never smaller than the luminous box dimensions. So let me change that here. I'll put in 0.12 and 4. And I want to note that I clicked on the render mode symbol and with this checked, it will change both the render mode and model mode symbol when I click OK. So I clicked on the render mode symbol here. You'll notice they both change. I'll click Add Redefine, and this luminaire should be correctly appearing in the model now. The point source is a little bit different. And let me start by bringing in the same IES file I used to define this luminaire and show you what happens. First of all, AGI detects that it's a point source and lists that. It then makes the luminous box minus 0.1 foot or positive 0.1 foot on all three axes. And so you end up with this little cube shape. So if you ever see this, recognize that it's a point source luminaire or IES file. And this is a case where you'd want to go back to the manufacturer and ask them to, s to provide a corrected IES file with proper luminous dimensions because this file will not calculate correctly and unless you know the actual dimensions of the luminous aperture and the dimensions of the luminaire itself and the direction it was tested which isn't always obvious from the photometry then you can't make the alterations I'm going to make here you can't necessarily properly define the luminaire so go get a corrected IES file in any event I'll click OK and it's going to define this with this little tiny symbol and to create this point source, somebody said, well, this isn't right, and they changed the luminous box, or the uh, symbol size, so that it was 4 feet long, 0.12, and I don't remember the factor here, but in any event, they ended up with this. But the luminous box dimensions are still the same. So let me delete this, and come back to my point source. And if you know the dimensions of the luminaire and the luminous source, and the direction it was tested, which we know in this case, because this photometry here matches this photometry, which is long on X, I can make alterations to the luminous box. So for X, again, we here we had minus 2, and positive 2, and on Y we have minus 0.06, and positive 0.06, and Z we have minus 0.01 for that small shift down and 0. And so now you need to add redefine. And I'll close this dialog. So these luminaires should be corrected except now you can see that because the symbol aligns to the luminous box it's now oriented the wrong way. And so I need to reorient it and I can't rotate it in a minus 90 degree here but I can rotate it 270 degrees to get it oriented the correct way. I now need to calculate so I can take a look at the results. And if we look at this in isometric view or elevation view with the ISO lines, everything looks the same. The calculations are all the same. And let's go to render mode and check out how things look with the luminous box as well as the front with ISO lines, and everything looks the way it should. So all three luminaires are behaving the same way now, and they, again, they're using the same uh, original IES file that's been altered, but now we've corrected for those problems, and we're getting what we needed to get. And back in top view, you'll notice, too, that the luminaire is no longer throwing light into the room behind. I hope this has been helpful and has shown just how important it is to evaluate the luminous box when defining any luminaires, as well as shown how to correct some of the problems you might encounter 
when the luminous box is incorrect and or the luminous box and symbol don't align correctly.